family uh, for that inevitable collapse. Now, it looks pretty peaceful right now. It is. Well, we're in, uh, we're in Falls End, which is one of the communities, one of the towns in the game. Uh, it's just been liberated gotcha. uh, by Alex, who's, who's playing the game. Um, it's, Shout out to it, Alex, everybody. Yeah. In the Twitch chat, I want to see you throwing up the claps. Alex is over there. If he dies, give him the thumbs down. Yeah, you know, uh, when we decided, you know, we want to bring Far Cry to America, it's, you know, there needs to be some level of believability. It sure. needs to feel like the world is lived in. We're walking around the house here, sort of showing a typical Americana. Uh, there's not a lot of people in the town right now because, like I said, they're all been kidnapped, and <laughs> so it's up to that the player. That will bring down population. Yeah, yeah. it's up to the player to, to to sort of. Uh, bring the communities back, build sure. a resistance, build, a, build an, uh, an army to, to fight against the cult. Was it a tough decision for you guys to come to America? Uh, I don't think so. It, it's something that uh, the team has really been wanting to do for, for a while. It, the question really was, what's a, what's a space that feels far cry-ish? Right. You know, we, we've been to... We, we, we've been to Kairat, we've been to you know, the, the islands in Far Cry 3. We've gone back in time. Yes, we have gone back in time <laughs> to, to Primal. Uh, but I, I think you know, trying to find a space that felt uh, dangerous, a little bit unexplored, sure. uh, a place that, that just feels like a, like a wilderness, like a frontier, that really is Montana. You know, right. We sent a team up there to sort of do a little investigation. Uh, doing some recon, and immediately they, you know, they fell in love with it. They said, you know, the people, the, the landscape, everything sort of feels very remote and Far Cry-ish. And then it became, okay, well, what's a cool villain that could, could sort of... Well, that's what's fascinating for me, be, being a Far Cry fan, right, mm -hmm. is the fact that I'm a fan of America as well. <laughs> and I wanted you guys to do something here, yeah. but Far Cry doesn't work in Chicago. Yeah. You know, what, what, what are you going to skin in Chicago to make a wallet? It doesn't, you know, <laughs> rats? That's not, not yeah, all we got. Not a lot you know, of yeah. uh, bears, not a lot of wolves yeah, around exactly. Chicago. But the rats are pretty big in Chicago. Exactly, I, I know, say. I know. Shout out to Boomer. There he is. There he is. Good boy. I have a little plush of him right here. <laughs> you don't see it yet, but I'm petting it. There it is. There it is. Uh, talk about uh, Boomer. What I mean, like you have so many. It, it, I don't think there's been a Far Cry that's had a pre-release run-up like this that's had so many characters already identifiable, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think Far Cry in the past obviously has been very. It's been known for its villains, right? Yeah, Voss, Pig, and Min. Like it's, it's very much been about you versus the villain. This time around, we wanted to, to bring the community into the fold, bring your, the, your friends, your allies, the people who are going to fight with you against yeah. this cult. Mm -hmm. How can we showcase them? You know, building people like Mary May, who uh, owns the Spread Eagle, uh, that will walk Has she thought about it. changing the name? Because well, it's so, a great name, but it does, oh, there's a connotation to it but that I don't know. But the thing is, you know, it's, don't, it's don't that sort of, you know, the, uh, the, the, the bar was named by her father, who, uh -huh. you know, wasn't maybe the most PC guy, a little bit, maybe a bit of a misogynist, <laughs> an asshole. But the thing is, you know, you, you talk to Mary in the game, you get a, a bit more of her backstory. And, and I think, you know, for her, she's like, yeah, I hate the name of this bar, I think it's stupid. Nice. But at the same time, it's, it's part of my dad. So that conflict of like, you know, if I change the name, am I, am I sort of part of getting rid of something? Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, you know, people, people are complicated, people are complex. And so, so that's her, wait, who's Casey Seagal? Casey Seagal is the cook. <laughs> Of the oh, spread you eagle. guys are the worst. <laughs> so if you, if you, oh man, if Nick Scarpino was watching this, he'd be like, I'm just the cook. You know, a Casey, lowly, lowly cook. Steve Casey will give you some recipes. Like he'll send you on some hunting that. missions, uh, and he'll also he's drop some wisdom bombs. Mm. Does he talk? Does he do the I'm just the cook? The lowly, lowly cook oh, line? Oh, he's just a cook. All right, okay. But does he say it? I want him to say it at some point in this video. Don't ruin the whole thing. I gotta buy it. I gotta buy it. When it comes out next Doesn't matter if he says it. He's got the hair. So. Mary's role is giving out quests, keeping you in grain. Like yeah, she, she's, but she's one of your partners too. Yes, she's yeah. one of the one of the, the members of the community. She's one of the community okay. leaders. So, uh, the people that you meet in the game, they're they're all a member of the resistance, right? Yeah. They're all sort yeah. of trying to fight back against the cult. Mary, Pastor Jerome, they're sort of sending you out on quests to say, hey, people have been kidnapped, or we need these convoys taken down, or uh, or, or I need I need a truck that you know, my sure. dad's truck to take them back. Mm -hmm. Then there's guns for hire that you'll meet as you explore the world. People like Grace Armstrong. Or, or Nick Rye, oh. uh, who you showed off. In, in so what's the, the difference the, between res resistance and guns for hire? The guns for hire are part of the resistance, but okay. the thing is the guns for hire, they're going to be your persistent buddies throughout the world. Okay. So Mary and Jerome yeah. are always going to stick around okay. in. Drew, you shut up now. <laughs> Look who it is. It's Jerome right, Jeffries, everybody. Yeah, Round of baby. Applause, Martin Roach making yeah, his debut here. Yeah, baby. Wrath, fury, vengeance, we saw it all. That's you. But you did that. compassion in you, too. That's a beautiful voice. <laughs> I can't tell if if Pastor Jerome would have made me go to church more or made me go to church less if, if church he greeted me with a like shotgun though. at the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, see, he's not about making you go to church. He's just making you think about it. Okay, that's all he wants to do. <laughs> Spiritual thing, shall we say. Where do we find Pastor right now? Where do you find him right now? This is his church. Yeah. This is, this is his place. But unfortunately, as you can see, 
uh, it's been devastated. Yeah. yeah this, this place has been looted, desecrated, town, everybody's been kidnapped. So now he's at the place where he's fighting back. Okay. He, he didn't want to be here. This is this was the fight that was brought to him. How, uh, how far do you go to get into that headspace, Martin? I mean, like, is the backstory? What, what is the backstory for the pastor? I fight that every day. Oh God. No, <laughs> no, no. no, no. Uh, to get the backstory for him, we go back what 20 years? Yeah. I guess. Oh wow. Like, back to the uh, first Gulf War. What, what he is? He's a vet. Comes home. He wants to find some peace. Find a place. A lot of vets don't find that. So he goes to a place where he can find it, the wide opens of Montana. And then here comes this cult, and they're slowly ripping it away. They're sure. ripping away his community. He's helped build his community. He's one of the leaders. He's not going to let it slip. Sure. He's, he's going to be the guy that says, all right, I don't want to have to do this, but I will take up a gun again. I know how to do this. I don't want to, but yeah, I know yeah. how to, and I can help lead these people I thought that back to the real world. When we met Pastor Jerome in the trailer, right? Mm-hmm. That was one of the most powerful things of him reading the Bible, pulling out the gun, out and the like gun. he had to go protect his flock. I like yeah. that. Yeah, about. exactly. And that He's was protecting sort of his flock. The the inspiration for the character, right? Where, where we have Joseph Seed, we have a guy who's sort of uh, taking religion, uh, taking scripture, yeah. twisting it for his own and, and sort of warping it. the message. Sure. So you know, we wanted to say, okay, well, there, we need the opposite of that. And we need mm-hmm. someone that's sort of uh, uh, yeah. a positive force of good. Here's uh, the other side. Yeah. It, and, and I think, you know, when we when you look at a character and you say, okay, well, what are the complexities we can give to him? Uh, having a, having a, a man of God who, because of how far he's been pushed, says, you know what? I'm willing to sacrifice my own soul yeah. uh, to save the people that I've yeah. been trying to, to look out for. Yeah, absolutely. To run back to the demons you ran away from is yeah, pretty cool. Exactly. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, is that it, fun it, to play? It's, it's, oh, it's incredibly fun to play. Yeah. Because you, you, you got to dig. You got to dig sometimes. Sometimes sure. I, you, I say something, and I just hear Drew on the airline go, "Okay, that that's good, but yeah, I, I, I need I, I need, need to a little believe more. it more. I need yeah, I need a little more. Need so a little dig a little deeper. Alex yeah. is fixated on this truck, and I have to the say, truck. my eyes are drawn to it as well. The Widowmaker. Wait, the Widowmaker. Yeah. Oh, now I like the bobblehead. A little, a little, a little boss bobblehead. Nice, nice. I like nice, the skirt nice. that he's wearing. Of course, bag. yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, bringing new vehicles uh, into sure. Far Cry Five, big part of it. You know. It's it's America, right? We want big monster trucks. It's Far Cry, all right. It's still Far Cry. Around. Don't we talk about the pastor and his <laughs> demons, and then the big rigs it does a 360 after running over a barricade. All right. Satanic good factory at work. Uh, yeah. So you know we see a bit of the cult up here. They're they're mm. roaming the countryside. Okay. They're going into towns. They're taking people hostage and ooh, executing them. And Alex is going to um, take them out. Oh, he's going to throw some bait. So, I mean, this is just the kind of stuff, as you're exploring the world, you're, you're meeting people, there's a bear that's now showing up. Um, is that a bear? Yeah, it's oh, a yeah. bear. It's a bear. It's Far Cry. It's, it's still very much Far Cry. Cry. Anything can happen. That would just be a rat in Chicago, so it makes sense, <laughs> yeah, why you're running over here doing this. <laughs> no, but, you know, as you explore the world, these are the sort of encounters that you're going to find. Nothing's sort of scripted. Everything's, everything's systemic. Um, well, that, I mean, that's always been the power of Far Cry, yes, right? Exactly. Where, I mean, it is the fact that you guys, I think, are, you know, make what a sandbox game, what, what mm-hmm. you make sandbox games that are fun to play because that is the story. Yeah, it's, We it's can about, all go yeah. off and do the same mission, the same objective, but we're all going to do it different ways yeah. and have different yeah. things Yeah, it's way. about giving the players all the tools to sort of really just go off and cause as much mayhem and havoc as they right, want. Right, right, right. Boomer just steal a gun for you? Nice. Dang right he did. That's what Boomer's <laughs> all about. Gives everybody the freedom. Um, but yeah, so so the the world, we, were, we wanted to focus on a more non-linear approach with sure. the story this time. Mm-hmm. So we had talked to Mary May earlier who said, had mentioned that, that Nick Rye, who lives down the road, was having some trouble with the cult. Maybe you want to go check on him. We're, ne- we're not guiding the player this time around in terms of you've got to do this mission, then then this mission, then this Oh, mission. so the objectives are yeah, just like in any order open. you want? Yeah, and the thing is like with Fall's End, you know, this could be some one of the first places that you, you go to in the game. It could be one of the very last. Gotcha, After gotcha. After the opening of the game, you're sort of dropped in the middle of the map, and yeah. you're just, okay, just go. Go, go where you people, want. Go explore, yeah, go figure out, build your resistance the way that you want uh, to take down Joseph Seed in the Interesting. Game. So that, like, if, like, there's no real way to be, like, how far into the game are you right no, now? No, yeah. you can exactly. tackle this in exactly. any order. Exactly. Interesting, interesting. Yep. So, yeah, Completely Nick's random. having a bit of a trouble uh, at his <laughs> airfield. The call to come in here. Nick, uh, Nick's uh, wife is is pregnant with child. Ooh. Okay. Um, she's uh, Nick was the guy with the crop duster from the yeah, trailer. Exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So he's got a plane. Uh, he's trying to figure out a way to to, to get his family to safety, right? Um, and in the cult, you know, like I said, Joseph uh, Joseph Seed believes that every single soul in Hope County has to be put has to be to 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 be a part of the cult, to be put into their bunkers. To save the to to save themselves from this kind uh, of collapse, the power of and you know, a lot of people don't like being in a cult. Yeah, uh, so they're gonna <laughs> fight. Back. 
There yeah, we so go. We took care of that problem. I love what Boomer just did there. Goes up and takes the badass <laughs> gun <laughs> and brings it to you. That's just ah, that's what he's all about. That's perfect. And there's Nick. So then Thanks Nick is part of the resistance. Yeah. Right, okay. exactly. Just like Pastor, just like yes. Mary. Okay. And the thing, you know, you do a couple quests for Nick. Yeah, you, you, you prove that, you know, you're willing to fight for him. And he says, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be on your side. I've got a plane. I'll be able to, to sort of take this guy and, and watch you back. Nice. Yeah. But for right now, uh, Nick, ha Nick has his plan that he's, he's going to fight back at the cult, you know, blow up some silos where they're sort of storing some explosives. Mm -hmm. uh, but, again, his wife is like, you're not, you're not going to stick your neck out there. That's too stupid. So he, he talks to you and says, you know what? Uh, maybe you want to take care of that problem for me? Go now fly my plane. Hold on. We got, we got oh, wolves. wolves. We got wolves. Wolves. Good job, Alex. <laughs> there we go. Yep, so there's, there so there's Nick's plane. Uh, but I think for that, you might go do a little fishing. That's See, okay. and this is one of the things you got. When I was talking before, you have such diverse landscapes, mm -hmm. and now you have to come up with wh what kind of animals would be out here. Yeah, yeah. Fishing's yeah. brand new. Yep. What else do you have in terms of everything else that's happening? I mean, it's, you know, fishing, hunting, uh, giving the player sort of. Far Cry is all about big action all the time. Like, yeah. insanity happening every minute. But at the same time, when you talk about Montana, the wildlife, um, you know, we wanted to give the player the ability to sort of, sort of hang out in nature, yeah, yeah. have a good time, something a little bit more relaxing than just murdering everything. Always killing across. everything, yeah. worrying about what's going to get um, you from behind. So we decided, you know, we're going to throw fish in it. It's a big part of sort of the culture in Montana and the culture of, you know, just the, sort of that, that frontier lifestyle. It's a way um, to just come here and decompress, relax, yeah, talk it out with our friends. The minute, the minute the fishing went in, yeah. everyone became obsessed about it. Oh, like really? There's, yeah. fishing, there's fishing tournaments back at the office. We've got a fishing tournament here at PAX. You know, people are trying to catch the biggest fish <laughs> to, to win some of our uh, some of the flag pins. Yeah. And people are going nuts. Well, it's just, like, it's who doesn't so love to fish? Yeah. Oh, hey, every now and then you want to put down the stick of dynamite and pick up a fishing <laughs> rod. Yeah, just yeah. Cut. Or throw the stick of dynamite yeah, in there and make it easier to get the fish. Uh, <laughs> Diamond in the net, we'll while travel. We, while we chill out here on the riverbank, <laughs> I've been past audience questions. Are you guys ready? Yeah, sure, sure, man. Drew, the first one's for you. Uh-oh. Bobby writes in and says, what inspired the team to do this one in the USA? Um, you know, I, I think it uh, bringing Far Cry to the U.S. was something the team's been wanting to do for quite some time. Yeah. It just never, it, it always, the question came back to believability, right? Sure. Like, does it, does it make sense? Oh, how could you set up Far Cry uh, in the U.S.? Um, so I, I think it was probably around three or four years ago that they, it started in earnest. Okay, we're going to set a, a, a Far Cry in the United States. Um, and it, 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 it just built from there, right? And, and I think that uh, the sort of the, the current times that we live in and, and the, the current state of things, just it, all of a sudden Far Cry in the U.S. is way more believable. Than yeah, of course, right. Oh, yeah. Be, there's uh, definitely two sides of it everywhere <laughs> yeah. now. You know what I mean? <laughs> was there, I mean... Was Montana the first and only choice, or what? Did you guys toy around with the idea there of a city? A couple, there were a couple of different uh, ideas on where to take it, but like, like I said, the minute uh, the team went to Montana, yeah, it was like, oh, no, just, this yeah. is it, this is it. So, you no, know, there's some other ideas in the back pocket, but sure, know, we'll those, right. <laughs> those went away real quick. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> All right, Martin. V i r a g o x v five three five writes in and says. Is that your natural vocalization, or did you rehearse to master a priest tone? What do you think? That's my natural vocalization. <laughs> uh, it's actually, it is pretty close to my natural vocalization. You seem so happy and lucky. Oh, You're so happy yeah, go lucky right now, though. Yeah, right now. But uh, basically this way. He's a big authoritarian. Yeah. I'm a father, so <laughs> I've got to put on that kind of voice from I time to Dad time. Voice. Sure, it dad just, voice comes out. Oh, absolutely. you gotta, yeah. you got to lay it down. Yeah. And Pastor lays it down. <laughs> How long have you been laying it down for with your kids? I've been laying it down for 18 years. Yeah, it's natural. Yep. That is a natural voice at <laughs> this point. Yeah, you, you understand. I just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then for everybody, Lorem Gillespie, the third, writes in and says, "Do you prep for voice recording? Or I'm sorry, do you prep for voice recording with other actors? So is it an ensemble thing, or is it mainly you guys alone? Uh, most in the booth, it's usually just us alone. Okay. Uh, I'm in the booth, and somebody's on the other side. Maybe Drew. Maybe somebody else. Maybe he's in another city. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has me say a line 18 million times <laughs> and scream like on fire. <laughs> exactly. Just keep scream like I'm on I'll fire. I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's really an uh, easy process. Yeah. Uh, but we work together when we go to the actual studio. 
Uh, then, then I'm going to work with two or three actors at the same time, and it, it's kind of like a, doing a play. Yeah. Okay. In, in the in studios, it's actually a so really Drew, cool process. How do you guys capture and mi record everything? Are you doing it j in booth, but when you go somewhere and they're together, are they doing the mocap? Yeah. Face so stuff? it's it's split between like, sort of like in, in uh, gameplay stuff. So what we saw when we saw Jerome earlier, that that's all VO booth. That's Martin okay. in the booth, sort of just reading a, a list of lines. The cinematics then are all mocap, right? And we we, gotcha. we have our big mocap studio in Toronto. Um, where you know we suit everyone up in the mocap suits, the little balls, and put a giant vice headset on them and shine. Really easy to so act, isn't it? Michael? And then yeah, oh, yeah. say act natural, natural. Yeah, very yeah. natural. <laughs> hey, you, you don't notice it. <laughs> hey, in your leotard right now, act like a big bad uh, exactly. bastard. Here's yes, this. And the leotard that tells no tales. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's this broom handle. It's a shotgun, and go act. <laughs> <laughs> and go. Really? Really? I mean, in that studio, what what did we use for the Bible? It, it was yeah, it was, it was like a, a block, a, a of, wood big block of wood and plastic. And they're like, no, yeah, no, this is it. With this the, opens with the up. fake gun on the inside. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, everything. You know, we we spend a lot of time, you know, props or, or sort of uh, set pieces in the game, making sure that there's stuff that the actors can interact with because because they've got all this equipment on. Yeah. The more things you can give to them that sort of use their imagination to pretend, it, yeah. the better the performance is going to be. brings us down. But it's got yeah, you it know because of it. all the cameras that you're in the space, everything sort of has to be uh, like a wire version of it sure. because the yeah. camera's got to sort of pick up all the data on where the, the body is at the same time. Final question before I let you guys stop fishing. Yeah. Do you do the voice recording separate? It's just, you know, Martin in a booth mm -hmm. because of the fact he's communicating to me, the player, so I'm looking at him. Like, I feel like it makes sense when I think about it. Of Okay, yeah, of course, cinematics, it's ensemble, everybody. Yep. But mm -hmm. when you're talking or giving me a mission, it's just me. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you yeah. Know, the player doesn't, uh, the player has no voice this time around. Yeah. You know, we wanted to be mm -hmm. able to, to create a character that people really could sort of inhabit as their, their own avatar. So there is a lot of uh, just sort of the, the actor just speaking to the character. To the character. Part. And it's a writing challenge as well because, you know, trying to figure out how you're moving a story along or how you're moving a scene along sure. when there's really just one character driving it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been probably the biggest challenge that I've had. Uh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's okay. tough to wrap that around your head and yeah. the move too. You're like, okay, what, are, what am I trying <laughs> to do? Because usually when you're talking with somebody, it's a back and forth. you get it. But you're mm -hmm. just like, what am I... Yeah. Okay, no, no, I'm motivated. I'm telling him to yeah. do this. I'm yeah. asking him to yeah. do this. I'm begging. Do you, do you like that challenge? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like any challenge. <laughs> any Anytime I'm uncomfortable, I'm, I'm pretty happy. You know, you, you <laughs> don't know what's going no, on. Well, that's that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, if, you, if I'm comfortable all the time, eh, I'm kind of bored. You're doing something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. That's yeah, Then any, anybody could be doing it. Right. I want to be the only guy that should be doing it. How uncomfortable can I make you? <laughs> um, <laughs> ta ta um, uh, all right, what's going on here, Drew? What's going on here? Uh, we're in a plane. We're <laughs> yeah, we, this we is new. took Nick's plane. Yes. First time in Far Cry 5, or first time for Far, Far Cry. Far Cry the series, right? The series, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we're bringing Sky Combat, uh, big planes, uh, jets. Uh, we've got the, this sort of seaplane here that Nick has uh, given to us. It's got machine guns on it. It's got rockets. It's got You can drop bombs on these little silos. So earlier on, we met Nick, and he was like, hey, go go blow up these silos. My uh, wife won't let me go fight the yeah, resistance. I won't do it. Or fight for the resistance. And so, and yeah, it's, again, it's sort of the structure of the game, right? Like, Nick told us this, the, the, he had this quest for us, and mm. we could we could have gone, you know, off exploring. You know, yeah, the, yeah. the quest is sort of waiting for us of course. to mm. pick it up and, and, and go do it. Um, it's also so a great view of like how different the, yeah, what, what yeah. you guys have going in, yeah. in Montana think, you know, right now. In in this this region, you know, it's a lot of farmland. It's a lot of uh, typical stuff that you might see in sort of the the, the countryside. Um, but the, the topography is way different. Like if you go to the north, you know, it's much more mountainous, much more forest. It, it feels more gameplay wise, feels maybe kind of more along the lines of like primal, which are, it's a lot of sure. hunting, it's a lot of sure, sure, sure. Um There's a, the other regions that you know. Real quick, I'm sorry. What is this on ahead? the left? What is the level? That two? is the resistance right. meter. So, oh. again, because it's a nonlinear game, yeah. we, we, were, we were trying to come up with a way with uh, how, do, how do I feel like I have, I'm, I'm, I'm giving a progression to the game. Okay. Right? So we said, okay, from the outset, you're trying to build up your resistance in each region that you find. So as you're meeting people like Mary and Pastor Drum, you're doing quests for them, or you're taking out outposts, what you're doing is you're building your resistance. Gotcha. So more people are going to show up to fight on your side. Okay. Uh, you're going to have more access to, to new guns for hire uh, to, to fight alongside you. Um, and at the same time, <laughs> the uh, the cult's going to start to react to like that's how we're sort of inserting our bad guys this this time around. Rather than saying go play this story mission, I'm going out, I'm clearing an outpost, and if that raises my resistance meter to a, a point where the cult notices me, yeah. now all of a sudden the bad guys go, no, 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 we're not, we're not having this. Interesting. Okay, uh, okay. They're going to show up and insert themselves into your story. Now, 
when I get the plane here, mm -hmm. do I have access to it the rest of the game? Can I just run around and use it whenever I want yeah, to? Yeah, you could t I mean, you could take this plane, you know, fly all the way up to the north, hang out with so the people So does this completely change taking down outposts? Because I feel yeah, like now I can just come, I, yeah. if I want to stealth, if, if I want to do yes, whatever. Yes, exactly. So you can take a plane around, you can bomb some guys. But the thing is, because Bring there's it. a lot more interior space. This song, <laughs> yeah! You feel it too, Max! <laughs> <laughs> So, but like, so I, the, I have the gameplay change of being able to shoot everything and blow it up, which seems yeah. awesome. But does the fact that water is a bigger part of it, that trees are a bigger part of it, is there more to it in that respect in terms of how to use the topography? Yeah, I, I, you know, this, I mean, when you get up to the north, where it's much more mountainous, much more forest, you know, you're going to have a bit more harder time navigating with the plane, right? And trying to, like, all those guys are sort of, you know, hiding out on the bottom of the ground. You're going to have to get on your, get on your, get on the ground, you know, go a little more hand to hand. Uh, uh, on foot combat, um, but here you know we wanted to showcase the the plane combat. We've there got we AI are. that are also flying uh, around. This is this guy's one of the chosen. Okay, he's, he's got like the elite soldiers uh, oh. of the cult. They've been trained to 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 defend the cult. These are the so red there, there's levels to the cult. Yeah, the people exactly. I meet on the yeah. street yeah. aren't the chosen. This right. guy's super exactly. Soldier. So there's like there's cult followers that you'll you'll find. Gotcha. But at the same time, there's chosen. There's special elite guys. As you progress through the game, as you build your resistance, mm -hmm. the chosen are going to start showing up more and more, and they're much tougher, much more accurate. They've got a lot more tools yeah. at their disposal to take you down. And now you put there them down on the baseball nice. field. Gamescom demo. This is packs. This game sucks. Oh. I mean, that's it. It doesn't even respect where it's at. I can't believe it. Oh my god. There we go. That's how you.